Zeb Judah is a six-time world champion, but he soon found out it's not his time. It's hammer time. Cletus, the Hebrew hammer, Selden joins us now. What's up, buddy? How you doing? Pride of Long Island. I got a lot of things to talk to you about. Coming off the biggest win of your career. But before we get to that, I want Long Islanders to know a little bit more about the Hebrew hammer, the personal side. Uh-oh. Is that all right? Uh-oh. That's all right. All right. All right. Let's first start off with this, the obvious. You don't run into many Cletuses. Yeah. Right? I'm I don't think I ever one. have other than you. Yeah. So your name, <laughs> tell me how it originated. Um, I was actually named after Cleet Boyer, the uh, Yankee baseball player, third baseman that won all those championships throughout the years because he was actually a family, uh, friends of a family member, my grandparents. Okay. And they were like, you know what? Growing up, when I was born, hey, we're going to name him Cletus. Did you always the like boy. the name or no? Um, you know, in high school, going into uh, ninth grade. Longwood High School? Longwood High School. I was 98 pounds. So you had to be tough with a name <laughs> Cletus your entire life. So I guess you just take it and uh, I enjoy it. I got a brother named Joseph <laughs> and a sister named Ruth. Obviously a Jewish name. And there's a Cletus. There you so. go. Well, it's definitely unique. And uh, so, yes, yeah, speaking of Jewish, you are a Jewish boxer. Not many of them. Yeah. So how did you get into this sport? Um, well, not that many Jewish athletes in general, right? There's like me and Julius Edelman is like the <laughs> only ones. There have been Jewish boxing champions in the past. Yes. Back in the uh, early, uh, early 20s, mm -hmm. uh, boxing was completely full of Jewish athletes. And that's where the, 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 the start of it all started. Um, usually people in poverty, uh, poverty mm -hmm. come out over from uh, in, to Ellis Island and right. whoever's the poorest usually becomes the best boxers because that's what they're fighting for. Um, I myself, I was always a three sport athlete and after high school, I still want to live that dream, uh, the same dream I had when I was a kid. You were a wrestler in high school? Wrestle, football, football player, played lacrosse, anytime there's an activity I wanted to play and as a kid, I always wanted to be a professional athlete. So after high school was over, I was like, ah, oh, I can't let it go over, go over me. And I found my way into a boxing gym. And <laughs> I got to say, I'm the worst boxer that you have ever seen. <laughs> like, I walked in the gym. It was the one in Shirley, uh, okay. Room 33. It was a very hardcore boxing gym. A lot of great fighters came out of there. Joe Smith Jr., mm -hmm. Adam Willett, Leon Green, so on and so forth. And you weren't good. No, I was horrible. They came in. You pay all the money up front because it's ran by the, uh, the town. Mm -hmm. And they beat me up. I said, damn. I'm going to buy my own equipment, came back, and I took my lickings for an entire year. And throughout the process of that, I've seen that these guys that were beating me up, they were only there for about two, three days a week. So I decided to come every day. And then I decided to come two times every day. Okay. And then within one year, I was beating those kids that had been there forever. And I started boxing at 22, which is like it's pretty late. the latest in the, the boxing game. It's like being a professional football player right, at 22. Sure. It's like, mm, yeah, right, it's not going to happen. And uh, I took that same concept of outworking everybody into the professional ranks. And as we've seen last Friday, yeah. I outworked my opponent, who is a six-time world champion. Won in the legend. 11th round. Ref stopped the fight. You're the champ now. You only have one loss in your career. You got a lot of knockouts. I want to get to that, but we see the beautiful championship belt here. And to the left, or the right, depending on how you're looking, we see, what are these? These are... Because I feel like ah. talking to you, this is almost more of your passion than boxing. Yeah. I don't watch too much boxing, but I'm a huge time collector, and that's basically what I've been doing. Funko for Pop. Funko Pop. So Funko is the company, and these are Funko Pops here. And these are things that I've been collecting over the past three years or so. And I had a really big addiction for them, and it turns out that me collecting them, they will actually have a tremendous amount of value on them. Uh, this Funko Pop right here, this holographic Darth Maul, mm -hmm. this thing goes for three thousand dollars. I paid a, eleven hundred for it, so it, it's okay. It's okay. So, so that's good that was good value. I, can't, right? I don't even want to touch it. Yeah, this one you can't touch. And you're serious about that? Oh yeah. Because I tried to take these out of the box before. <laughs> he was like, "Whoa, whoa, whoa!" Don't touch those pops. Like, All right. Does I it? said you could touch this one. Thanks. Little Pillsbury Doughboy. Okay. Add icons. Uh, the, but wait, the, but wait, the one over here is your own, and that's pretty <laughs> cool that they made it. Yeah. So um, I'm hoping, well, I th I'm really big with Funko. I've been in their Funko movie. I've been a celebrity guest at their fun days parties. And I told them, 
don't make me a pop until I win a world championship. But there was a uh, custom artist who won an award there who actually made me my own personal pop. That's pretty which, awesome. Uh, yeah, so I got about three or four different ones. People make them for me all the time. And uh, I get to share with them. And I love to get to see them all the time in the collection. Why show you, them I all. mean, you have a whole box here. And we'll, yeah. we'll, we'll show a bunch of them. And so, uh, what, give me one more that you like right. so much. So this is Snap, Crackle, and Pop. This pop is based off of ad icons. Can I touch this one? Yeah, go no? right ahead. All right. Um, this pop, these, these oh, guys Rice are Krispies. cute. Yeah, it's Rice Krispies, right? So growing up, everybody loves AI uh, cereal, right? Sure. Who doesn't want to have that on their shelves? I have another one. You know, that goes for about 40 bucks. This goes for about $500. It's a Tony, Tony the, the Tiger, Tiger, which is a pretty cool pop. I got so many different ones. I own about 2,600 of these things. You name it, you wow. we got it. Like, here's a... Uh, one from Wizard of Oz. Okay, so. They're all off of, based off of pop culture. Yes. So if you watch a TV show, a movie, I know my buddy Zab Judah gave me a Baby yes. Smalls Funko Pop at the weigh-ins. I thought he was trying to play mind games. I was really mad at him. And he did that, he made me smile. So now you liked him. So I was like, oh man, I gotta switch it up. So I brought myself a Tupac, Tupac, <laughs> right? So that's his uh, Notorious B.I.G.'s other guy. This pop here goes for about $500. My Funko Pop collection is valued. Yes. You can $120, say hundred and twenty thousand dollars. Your collection, one hundred twenty yeah. grand. Wow. Yeah, and I got stuff that's really rare. So this is a graded Funko Pop signed by Mark Hamill himself. That thousand piece limited. Uh, the signature on here costs yeah. three hundred and ninety five dollars. I had to wait three hours online. Three hours online. He, he to didn't get know that. who you were. Uh, he told my girlfriend to be safe. <laughs> and uh, I got a great, this is the only one in the world that's actually signed on this wow. figure. It's, uh, it's only a thousand pieces here. Uh, I brought some other ones. Uh, my girlfriend loves Disney, so I brought her Jiminy Cricket one. Uh, there's some new ones out. If you guys wanted to get some in the store now, they just got a new license for the Simpsons Pops. So those guys are out. I own about 2,600 of these things. You didn't bring them all here, did you? Not even okay. close. <laughs> this is about $10,000 in value here. This just a Target exclusive. This goes for $90. Okay. If you wanted to buy it in the I, secondary there's market. A, there's a future for you after the <laughs> boxing is over. Ooh, you have no idea. Conan has a pop. Everybody gets the pop treatment. And one of my other personal favorites is this two-pack right here. I love these things. Uh, they're all based off of pop culture. So if you're into video games, TV, music, you name it, they got it. And they have the license for it. Okay. Ah, all right. Funko is my game. Yeah, I'm telling you, man. I can go for 10 hours for this. I know you I can. I love my pops. I <laughs> I love collecting, baby. <laughs> All right. Well, yeah, that'll be part two of this, but uh, boxing. boxing. Your, your, your other passion. Yeah. So, you know, hammer time. We've got the knockouts. You're on the comeback trail. Big win. I would say probably the biggest win of your career. Uh, a dominant effort. Now what's next for you? It's funny how we got to this part second. <laughs> People know me more for collecting. I swear. Well, I want Long Island to know channel. all about you. Yeah, they know me more for collecting, and it's funny you go with the mm -hmm. boxing first. I'm going to say this before I get it. He didn't even actually bring the belt. He told me to bring all the Funko Pops. <laughs> he didn't even mention the belt once. Well, you know what? People have this, you know what? People have this impression of boxers. <laughs> and if someone doesn't like boxing, they may just think of you in one way. And I right. want people to know, you know, the different facets of you. Yeah. I know you as like a fun-loving, right. light guy until you're ready to knock somebody's head off. Yeah, as soon as I get into a boxing gym or in g any gym or fitness, uh, I'm 100% serious. You can see the change right away. Right. Uh, so coming up um, after that last fight, there is the next fight. And what is the next fight going to be? We don't know be? yet, right? We don't know yet. But as of right now, the only opponent that I want to fight is Manny Pacquiao. I want him to win his next fight, and I, I want to fight him and uh, redeem Long Island yes. from that last performance that we've seen uh, a few years ago and, uh, and show them I, uh, a guy who started boxing at 22 years old, that worked hard, trained every single day, I mean, focused. Yeah, I mean, Pacquiao obviously is a Hall of Famer. He's a legend. That would be an unbelievably action-packed fight. And do you feel that you, with the hammer, I mean, all your wins for the most part are by knockout, that, that is what separates you from other boxers of your weight class? Uh, absolutely. And everything you mentioned at the beginning, the Hall of Fame and the legend, yeah, yeah. they said the same thing about the last opponent I had. So my conditioning and my knockout power definitely changes everybody's situation. Uh, in the third round of my last bout, I hit Zab Judah with just one, hit, one little shot, and he wobbly. got a little wobbly. And uh, my consistent pressure, and lately I've been boxing a lot of lefties, 
I definitely want to fight Manny Pacquiao and put on a great show for everyone. Well, that would be a great show, and maybe you can get. Does Pacquiao have a uh, fungal punch? Yes, he does. Wait a second. He's a basketball one too. Uh, do you see the connection? I here? won't buy it though, because <laughs> I won't. My, I don't buy any of the boxing ones. Uh, maybe he could, he could autograph one for you. Uh, that, you could give one of yours <laughs> to him. Oh, no, I'll definitely get one and make him sign it, and then I'll make him sign the gloves, like I did with my last. The last fight, I had Zab Judah sign the right. boxing gloves. I'm a collector <laughs> in that heart, so I, I, I enjoy that. So I'll do the same thing with, with Manny. Where do you envision yourself in your boxing career, let's say, two years from now? Two years from now, I hope I don't have to box anymore. I hope it's, it's, it's all done and said for. Uh, I've been working out basically my entire life. I'm mm -hmm. 32 years old. And in two years, if I can continue the pace where I'm going injury-free, you know, I had four major surgeries. I even had Tommy John surgery. So as long as I can get past everything like that and do what I want, I can be done with boxing, buy a house, and just live just like a regular have person. have a successful boxing career and then just sell some Funko Pop. <laughs> yeah, go correct. to conventions. That's right, sign some stuff. You know, if I'm boxing more than two years, I'll be boxing until I'm 40 years old, so I'll buy a house. Wow. Well, I wish you the best of luck in the ring. And at the conventions, Ooh, I go, love it. Go check him out on his YouTube page. Yeah, Cletus Sell is my YouTube channel. Instagram is Collecting Cletus, not Life of Cletus. Collecting Cletus is my collecting page, a boxing page. Real life one's Life of Cletus. You're a character, man. <laughs> All right, best of luck, man. Thank you.